Cool. Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, that's a lot louder than I'm used to. Uh, usually when I'm teaching, I'm just like yelling and uh, not used to having a mic. Uh, yeah, so hi. Uh, about me, uh, Ryan Work Hacker U. Uh, <laughs> one time I had a conference uh, byline and I forgot to say Ryan Works at Hacker U or Works at or Work at Hacker U and uh, it's an inside joke. Uh, so yeah, I'm an instructor developer at Hacker U. Uh, if you've never heard of Hacker U, we're uh, a boot camp where we teach uh, people who want to learn how to code uh, starting from week one to week nine, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WordPress, Git, uh, Ajax, API, stuff like that. Uh, R. Christiani on Twitter, I'll hold here and let you just follow me right now. No? Okay. Uh, RyanChristiani.com, uh, I also mentor at Node School Toronto. How many people have heard of Node School Toronto? Couple people, yeah. If you haven't, haven't been out, I uh, highly suggest it. A uh, really great, uh, fun time. And really quickly, I want to talk about Let's Learn ES6. Uh, I just launched this. It's a video series I've been doing about ES6, and I'm also going to do an ebook. Uh, so let's learn ES6.com. You could go and find out a bit more about that. I don't know about you, but I've heard React was good. Has, have you heard that as well? No? Nah? Okay. Uh, Shout out to Wes Boss for making this. Uh, JavaScript for, uh, for Millennials, I heard React was good by Macklemore. Uh, so React at Hacker U, uh, how we're using React is for a lot of internal applications we're building uh, with React these days. Before it used to be like a lot of Ruby on Rails, uh, WordPress, stuff like that, but we're shifting uh, towards React and sort of like a, a Node Mongo Express backend. And uh, another kind of consideration I think about uh, when I think about React at HackerU is how are the alumni kind of uh, taking this? If we're sort of uh, responsible for taking people from uh, learning how to code uh, up to sort of into their career, uh, we should also be sort of like a, a guiding light, a mentor for uh, maybe learning new frameworks and stuff like that. So uh, when I think about this, I think about uh, what are new developers, how are they approaching learning React, and ultimately uh, one sort of thing is React sort of the new AngularJS in job postings. How many people have seen, if you look on a job posting I, on LinkedIn, uh, it used to be maybe a year and a half, two years ago, Angular, 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 now it's like React? Uh, do you know React? So what does that mean for us? And uh, Ultimately, we need to think about why we have React. Uh, do we really need another framework? We have Ember, we got Angular, we got Backbone, Vue.js, Mithril, Tesla. Now, I thought I made that one up, but that's an actual thing. Uh, that's a Node uh, MVC framework. Uh, if it wasn't, I was definitely gonna maybe start making that because I feel like that would have had to have been a thing. So something to remember is that uh, React is really just the view layer. Uh, when Facebook started making it, they had some issues they were trying to solve, and uh, I don't think they ever really planned on having React being this big uh, MVC framework type thing, right? They really wanted to kind of have this simple view that was fast to render, uh, and that kind of paid attention to what it had, the data it kind of had going on. So React is just a lot of simple components. And the problem that it really kind of solves, or the problem that it's kind of used for, is keeping your application state sort of in check. Uh, you pass props, or you kind of set state on your, uh, your components in React, and uh, everything's kind of going really nicely. So because it's just sort of this view layer, it's more of just a tool, like a building block, like a Lego block on top of your, your entire application. It's not the whole damn thing. Uh, how many people have used uh, Ember here? So Ember is like a really big, big, big framework. It has sort of all the tools you need, and there's like very opinionated ways of doing things. Uh, but with React, if you're just using the React regular, just like just without any like Redux or whatever going on, it's just sort of view layer. It's just components. So it allows you the freedom to sort of decide what you want to do with your application, which is quite nice. So really quickly, uh, just an example, uh, at HackerU we made a new note system recently, and uh, it's all kind of uh, compartmentalized into uh, different components. So uh, you can see where it says HTML, that would be a big section, uh, and inside of there there's a lot of like lesson components. Um, inside of those lesson components we have a whole bunch of topics, and so it's all broken up into this nice modular um, uh, thing, and this was really great, and this allowed us a lot of freedom when we were building our app uh, to sort of just like work uh, collaboratively as well. I will say that I did not actually do a lot of this. Uh, Kristen, one of my uh, uh, colleagues, actually did this. I did the star feature though, so that works really well. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so in React, components reign supreme, right? Uh, if it's just the view layer, it's just all about putting some HTML onto the DOM. It's about putting some data onto um, our HTML page. And uh, because it's components, it allows us to make our applications very modular. It allows us to break up what used to be, be, be really big templates into these small, nice, reusable parts. And uh, this is nice because it allows us to keep our code dry, at least allows us to keep it modular, because if it's just little components, it's really nice like that. Uh, and it allows us to kind of reuse things over and over again. And uh, I think it's important to look at uh, not just React is doing this component thing. There is the web component spec that's still kind of rolling along um, through the, the process there, but uh, libraries like Polymer. Polymer is just about uh, web components. Uh, so the web is sort of moving towards this more sort of like compartmentalized, component-based um, uh, style. Ember as well has its own components. Uh, I believe Angular 2 has components as well. So uh, everyone's kind of going toward this, towards this more kind of like single isolated uh, structure. So just really quickly, uh, the base stuff with React is that you have these components, and these components have like a life cycle they go through. Uh, they have a whole bunch of steps that uh, are kind of executed when they're rendered onto the page. So for example, when you uh, mount a component, so when it's first rendered onto the page, you have the component did mount um, hook. And what this does is this allows you to sort of decide, uh, what do you want to do with this component? Uh, this component is going to load some data. What is it going to do? Uh, so component did mount gives you a lot of freedom to sort of decide how your component moves forward. Uh, and similarly, component will unmount. So if the component's about to be removed from the page, uh, would you also like to do something? Um, there's obviously a ton of other lifestyle, um, sorry, lifestyle, uh, a new Vogue React JS. Um, life cycle hooks in React, but uh, component will mount and component will unmount are quite nice. And well, component will unmount. How many people have used Backbone before? Uh, so in Backbone, you sort of had to clean up after yourself uh, in some of your views, like uh, the um, detached listeners and stuff like that. So the component will unmount is sort of like Backbone. You kind of clean up uh, anything that you need to at the end of a component's life cycle. And this is really nice because I think sometimes you can get a little too like into the magic of a framework uh, and like you want to do something a little bit different than the opinionated way that it happens, and that could be kind of difficult. Because everything's a, just a component, just a straight up kind of modular thing, uh, it makes it really easy to test these things. How many people are testing their applications now? I, I wasn't really for a very long time. Uh, we actually don't test the, the React front end for our Chalk app, but uh, Chalk is what we call the notes. But um, we test, uh, or I tested the API. And if you haven't started testing yet, I highly suggest taking a look at it because it gives you a lot of reassurance. When all of your tests pass and you start adding new code, you're like, okay, things are still going okay. Uh, there will be cases where you, know, you kind of mess up or you don't test for a specific edge case, but uh, if you're thinking about React and thinking about your components, uh, you could start getting collecting quite a few components, kind of just like more and more Lego box, uh, Lego blocks in your Lego box. Did everybody have Lego and you just had like a big box where you just like threw everything into it and then you'd find one on the ground and step on it later? Uh, that one that you step on the ground later, maybe that's one you didn't test. Uh, so that kind of hurts you a little bit. But um, being able to sort of isolate and kind of make our components easy to test, or sorry, our components, isolated components are nice and easy to test based on uh, the modular uh, nature of things. So uh, in general, this also means your components are pretty loosely coupled. I mean, your components could have quite a few dependencies if it's like a really big component, but you might have stateless components that just sort of take some props and render it onto the page. Uh, so this also helps you to test because uh, depending on how you're building your components or ultimately if you find your component is too uh, sort of dependent on other things, you could take a step back and decide how can I make this easier to test, how can I break this up and make it uh, not so sort of dependent on everything. So I think one of the biggest things that uh, kind of got people when React first came out was JSX. How many people like the JSX syntax? How many people write like the actual like React, I actually don't know what it is, React.createElement or something like that? Does anybody actually do that? One person? 
No, that's it? I don't actually know anybody who doesn't do JSX, but it was so weird, right? We were always told, uh, especially when I was learning uh, years ago, you know, uh, HTML is your structure, CSS is your styles, and JavaScript is sort of this bigger uh, interactive uh, application, right? But now we have this structure inside of our JavaScript, but it's also not like in quotes, it's not like strings that we're appending and concatenating together, it's like just in there. And that's really weird. Uh, I think it seems weird at first, but uh, I also think it allows us to create more intuitive templates. Um, if React is all about components, we want to kind of keep uh, things isolated in that one component. And if you're using modules, uh, if you're using like Babelify or Browserify, Babelify, Webpack, something like that, you probably have all of your, your React code in the one file and you're importing it wherever you need it, right? So uh, it allows us to have these more intuitive templates where we can see our structure and also work with our uh, kind of logic as well. And it allows us to attach our events like right to the DOM, which again was a thing we were told was wrong uh, a long time ago. But now since it's right in that file, I think it makes a lot more sense. And yeah, so we used to be always be told, uh, you know, years and years ago before jQuery.on or add event listener, you'd do like on click in your HTML. And that uh, was like really coupling your logic with your, your, your structure, and that was not cool. And then we kind of moved away from that. And then all of a sudden, we're going back to that. The whole web industry kind of just goes like, oh, this thing's garbage, let's go back. And then wait a second, I think that thing was OK. Maybe we'll go back towards that thing. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that. It can be a little frustrating at times. But um, I think kind of putting these declarative events in the DOM, uh, so in our JSX templates, uh, is really nice, because it allows us to look at one file to sort of understand everything that's happening with our component. You can also even put, I don't, I don't do this, I actually had a quick poll. Does anybody put their styles in their JSX files as well? A couple people? Uh, I haven't done that yet, but you can also put your styles and put everything you need inside of the one JS component file uh, with React, and that's kind of nice. So you can do something like this, where you have like a user, uh, and you have some button that on click would delete the user. This makes a lot of sense, because you can see the logic and the actual event happening in the DOM itself. Uh, yeah, so we were always told to keep things uh, kind of breaking apart. Broken apart? Breaking? Breaking's not a word. Uh, broken apart. And since structure is becoming like increasingly more dynamic, and these components are becoming increasingly more complex, keeping this structure together, uh, I think, makes a lot of sense. How many people don't like this, actually? Anybody? No? I like to ask a lot of questions. Because in class, nobody puts their hands up. So I always really enjoy that like ask a question and the no response thing. It's really good for me. Uh, lack of features. So I think the one thing to th remember here is that uh, React is just the view layer. Uh, it is not an MVC, MVStar, MVVW, whatever uh, uh, framework library. And it's just the, frame, uh, just the view layer. So uh, it's a great building block. And uh, I think they did this on purpose. Uh, I'd hope they weren't kind of trying to solve all the problems with this. They were just kind of like, here's one tool to go forward with. And that's a good thing. The one issue I've found, uh, and I think you've probably found this as well, is there's no real clear path uh, when you're starting a React application. How, or how many people have like a real, like, I start it like this every time? Does anybody start like differently every single time where you're like, what am I going to use this time? How do I going to get going? There's no like ember or uh, angular way of doing it. There's no you know, library way of doing things. That's a little ES6 joke right there, because of the template literals. I'll take that one out. Uh, <laughs> how do you start a new project? So how do you actually get going with this? So uh, you know, you just start with an empty HTML file and put the React script on the page. Do you have some sort of build process? Are you using Webpack? How many people use Webpack? How many people use Gulp and something like Browserify? How many people use NPM scripts? How many people use Babelify? How many people use Grunt? 1.0 released recently. It's good to see them doing some stuff. Uh, Grunt was so good. And I'll say it, their logo is way better than Gulp, right? That's really why you should pick them. Uh, if you think about Ember, Ember is this huge opinionated framework. And they're sort of uh, opting into everything, right? So Ember is like the MV whatever. Uh, they're saying, use all of our things. Here's how you can do everything. Um, 
And it's really good. Like, there's a very clear path, there's a clear start when you're doing Ember. Uh, if you've ever done an Ember app, Ember CLI is amazing. You just start an Ember app, you can add your uh, components and routes and stuff like that pretty simply. Uh, when you're doing React, how do you structure your folders? How do you decide where things go? Like, it's a lot more difficult. One other thing that it's kind of missing initially is uh, how do you access your data? So after you've decided on building a React application, you're going to want to get some data, right? That's pretty much the first thing you want to do after you pick some JavaScript framework to do something. Uh, and you have to kind of decide where it comes from. So uh, Ember has Ember data, so the Ember data models, and you can kind of uh, hook that up to like a JSON uh, API style um, backend. Angular would use like the dollar sign HTTP service to grab you know all the AJAX requests and stuff like that. Backbone had uh, models and collections. That was kind of the way you were kind of accessing things and storing your data. What does React have? Well, I guess you could do dollar dot AJAX. You could use Fetch. They finally made that happen. Uh, you could roll your own if you wanted. <laughs> sort of up to you. I wouldn't probably never roll my own, uh, but you could if you wanted. And I think the whole up to you part is actually really quite nice, um, which I'll get at in a little bit. So the last portion uh, before I kind of talk about what I think are like the really, really good por uh, parts of React is application flow. I feel like I'm going a lot faster than I was practicing at home pointing around. Um, so application flow, how are you going to handle your data? Again, this is not an MVC, MV star, whatever framework, so how is this going to go down? React or uh, Facebook introduced the Flux architecture, but this was not an actual implementation, right? They kind of told you, uh, they showed you this chart. I feel like it would not be a React presentation without a Flux chart going on here, so I'll let you mull over that for a little bit. But they told you, uh, this is how we're doing it React. And, or at React, at Facebook. Uh, and the one reason they came up with this Flux architecture is that weird uh, bug, the, the messenger bug, where it always said you had one thing, but then you clicked on it and there was nothing there. Data got lost somewhere in the whole process uh, of the application. So with uh, Flux, you have actions go to dispatchers, and the dispatcher goes to the store, the view consumes some data, and it can send an action back and kind of keep going like that. So it's kind of up to you initially to decide, OK, how am I going to implement this? If you go to the Flux website, you can see the documentation. And they actually kind of walk you through uh, if you wanted to build your own dispatchers, actions, and stores, and stuff like that. But people usually don't want to do that. They just want to like, include some .js file and kind of have it start going. So uh, it was up to you for a long time. Obviously, Redux is sort of the most popular uh, implementation of some sort of application flow following the Flux pattern. Uh, and that's really good. But then you have other things. Uh, how are you syncing it up with your database? Uh, are you just doing like uh, a simple Node Mongo Express thing? Or maybe you're using like Relay and GraphQL. Does anybody use Relay and GraphQL here? This person's using everything over here. So nice. <laughs> uh, and these are new things. And it's, so it's like these are all just other building blocks on top. And you actually don't have to use any of these things. You could just use uh, none of this. We actually, when we're building the note system, we don't use any of these. We don't even use Redux because, uh, well, I'll get into that later, maybe. So uh, I think there's a lot of really good parts about React. Um, and most of the good parts are that it's just a lot of just JavaScript. Um, well, one good part is it's, it's fast. Uh, so the way that React kind of renders things onto the page, uh, really quick, they do the virtual DOM diffing, where it's like, you have this thing, now you have this thing. What things actually changed? Instead of if you were doing Backbone, for example, and you had a view, and you uh, changed, I don't know, like the author name or something like that in some um, header, uh, you'd have to re-render the entire header. And if you're doing that on a large application, that can really slow things down. You can noticeably see that things are getting quite uh, slow. But with React, it, it allows us to sort of uh, make things really fast. Because we do this JSX, and that creates this virtual DOM. It allows us to uh, render things, multiple things, lots and lots of things, really, really quickly. Um, this is great. And uh, the folks at Ember uh, you know, pretty much just said, yeah, we saw that that was really, really good. So we started to implement this Glimmer engine. Uh, so it's actually great, because React is sort of this framework that's helping push other things further. So uh, I'm pretty sure like Yehuda Katz and Tom Dale just kind of took out like 
a lot of the parts from React that were really good and kind of like started to port them over to Ember. So it's actually expanding and making Ember, and hopefully uh, other uh, framework authors are seeing this and kind of pushing it even further. And I think this is one of the biggest kind of good parts uh, for me, is that it really forces you to explore and sort of just become uh, more aware of what's going on. There's a big React ecosystem, and I believe somebody's going to talk on that uh, after this. But because there is no clear path, because there is no clear sort of uh, React way to do things, it's kind of forcing you to uh, uh, explore different possibilities. When you start an Ember app, it's like you kind of do it that way, uh, and there's a whole structure going on. But when you start a React app, where do you want to go? Uh, each um, project has a different set of requirements. And uh, you know, one framework is not going to fill all those requirements. But if React is sort of one layer, one uh, Lego block of your application, it allows you to really kind of uh, uh, tailor the application that you're building, uh, each application that you're building to your pers uh, purpose. Uh, yeah. And ultimately, I think it's creating better just JavaScript devs. It's not just like I'm an Angular dev uh, developer, I'm an Ember developer. It's just creating better JavaScript developers. Uh, too often I see, especially when I'm teaching students and they kind of go into the real world and then they start picking up a framework. Angular for a long time is very, very popular. Uh, so they would just kind of like dig into that, but never really core, understand like the core JavaScript stuff. A lot of problems that you'll solve inside of React are not very framework or uh, library specific. They're kind of just like JavaScript problems. And this is great because it's helping us to create better JavaScript devs. Uh, oh no, that one's from the internet. Oh, that's a little ja just JavaScript sticker. I thought I had my whole slides ready to not have any uh, Wi-Fi, but uh, that sucks. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, so we have uh, just JavaScript kind of going on, and you're learning about lots and lots and lots of things in JavaScript. Instead of learning about, you know, the Ember way of iterating over your uh, Ember data, it's like, now you just have to make up your data. So because uh, Angular is not an MVC framework, uh, it doesn't have that M in there. There's no model. You have to decide how you're going to handle your data. Most of the time, it's just a plain object literal uh, with some keys and values. You could use something else if you wanted, but... Now it's up to you to decide, how am I going to manipulate this data? How am I going to uh, go ahead and uh, you know, get that data to where it needs to go? I also think it's really good because it's uh, introducing a lot of junior developers, uh, new people who have maybe been working in companies that haven't had the opportunity to get into this kind of stuff. Uh, it's introducing them to like ES6. So uh, the new kind of uh, spec for uh, JavaScript, we're actually on ES7 or ES2016 now, but um, it's allowing them to see these new features kind of uh, implemented in a real practical manner, as opposed to sort of just like theoretical, like foobar, let's make a class. It's like, well, you could make a React class, and how do you kind of extend other components with that, and stuff like that. Excuse me. Um, it's also introducing a lot of people to functional programming. Uh, because you have to determine how you're going to deal with the data. Uh, sometimes you get into some really big, complex situations, and you have to decide, OK, how am I going to do this? Uh, it's introducing people to like map and reduce and all of these different things that are really quite nice. It's also introducing people to this idea of immutability. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of the Redux, Redux stuff, Redux, uh, is about immutable states and sort of like, you're not kind of handling that. Let, let Redux kind of work with that. So uh, it's introducing people to this idea. And it's actually, uh, again, making people kind of better uh, developers, programmers, not just JavaScript developer or um, framework specific developers. Uh, and I think the very last thing I kind of want to talk about, I'm going so much faster than I thought, is people get afraid of all the possibilities. So, you know, when we were talking about how you're going to uh, deal with your data, you have Flux, Redux, Relay, GraphQL, maybe you do your own thing, Fetch, and all these things. They get kind of afraid of the possibilities, and they're like, I'm going to have to use everything. How do I use everything? This is going to be too much. And uh, Dan Abram Abramov, uh, the guy who created Redux, uh, he had this kind of tweet rant in January, I think, this year, uh, where people were kind of getting this like JavaScript fatigue. How many people feel like they have hit JavaScript fatigue once or twice in their life? Just one, two? 
It's OK. I think we've all hit it, because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on there. But uh, the great thing about the React ecosystem and kind of React itself is there's a lot of components, Lego blocks we can put together. And you don't have to take them all. Do you need React Router if it's just sort of like a 10-page application? No, you don't. Uh, do you need Webpack? Are you code splitting? Do you need to do all these crazy things? Probably not. So just don't even include that. Don't get fussed with that kind of stuff. Ultimately, you don't need it all. You don't even need Redux or something like that. We don't use Redux, and our application works just fine. Um, yeah, I went a lot faster than I thought. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will say this. I didn't notice this, but I have a ton of React stickers, if anyone is interested. Also, I have some just JavaScript stickers. It's just JJ. I'll show you them if you want one. <laughs> Come find me. Yeah, cool. Any questions, I guess? Yeah? Will React die if, um, when Web Components comes in? Yeah. Oh, uh, I was reading some stuff, and I think, uh, so the question is, um, when Web Components comes out, do you think it would kill React? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. No, because I think it's, they're, they're still quite different. The idea of the components is uh, similar, but um, I think even the people who were initially building React were thinking, should we implement uh, web components? Because I think uh, Ember, for a long time, was implementing like, the actual web component spec, but then it wasn't quite like, going the way they wanted, so they kind of moved on, and React sort of done the same. So I don't think it would, yeah, because React also has a couple other things in it. The whole idea of the component is there, like the whole modular thing that you can just kind of reuse over and over again, but it's not the same uh, uh, as a, like a web component, like an actual legit web component. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Okay, thank you.